Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Finally, I have the Save Klaus by Round 16 Solo Guide. I know you guys have been asking for it for a while and it's taken a bit, but better late than never. Uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Don't want to take up too much of your time, but we're going to start off with the loadout and what we're going to be taking in to actually complete this as soon as possible. Now, just like last time, I have my Easter egg loadout right here. And as you can see, I have Frontline as my specialist because just like last time it is very useful and it is also needed because it prevents us from going into the higher rounds and also skipping rounds as well. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the mods that I'm taking in, starting off with specialist training. This allows us to get the meter a lot quicker without killing too many zombies, fully loaded to be able to have more ammo in the lower rounds and get more points, and then resourceful to get more double points and max ammo, so you can replace that with determination to get shields when you activate frontline. Uh, for the primary, I am taking in the M1911. This is very necessary as it takes down the blimp very, very quickly and also uh, knocks down the panzer mortar a lot quicker as well. As for my lethal, I'm taking in the satchel charge. Just in case I do throw a grenade, it doesn't detonate right away. I would have to detonate it myself. And then last and finally, I'm going to show you the attachments that I'm taking in with my 1911. Uh, Extended Max is probably the only one I recommend. The other ones aren't really useful. I just have them on there just because why not? Uh, so now that we got all of that out of the way, let's just go ahead and jump in game and uh, show you guys a guide. All right, so to make this easier for you guys, we're going to go round by round and just include everything that's obviously necessary. So right off the bat, we're going to go with round one, three shots to the leg, and then knifing the zombie. This is going to help us maximize points and be able to open as many things as possible in the lower rounds. Once you're done with that, go ahead and buy the door and then make your way to the first valve over here by the bunker. But on your way there, we're going to stop right here in this sewer hole and then uh, wait there a couple of seconds. A zombie's going to spawn and then you're going to be able to shoot him for around 100 points which is equivalent to meleeing one zombie because like i said before every point counts moving on to round two it's going to be four shots to the leg and then knifing the zombie and then just this round we're going to be turning the rest of the valves and opening the door to the riverside so while we're doing that i'm going to go ahead and show you on screens the amount of points that you're going to be needing for every single round and uh, what we're going to be using them for so as you can see on screen, there's round three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then skipping round nine because we're not going to be purchasing anything. Then round 10, 11, skipping 12 once again because we're not buying anything, and then 13. Now these are all things that you need to buy on these rounds because if you don't, guess what? You have to restart. That's simple. Uh, also, uh, do the math if you're going to be buying some other stuff like Stamina Up and uh, Speed Cola. Like for example, on round 10, you need a thousand points for the Spike Trap, uh, and then you want to buy Stamina Up as well. You can go ahead and do the math and see if you're still going to have enough for the spike trap and also the 2,000 points for the S mine on round 11. So just be patient, take your time, breed over this. Uh, just make sure you do that math because you don't want to buy things that aren't necessary and that you don't need and then be left with nothing to uh, be able to buy the stuff that you actually do need. So moving on with round two. Now that you have all of the valves turned, you can come and activate the pilot light in the center of the map and kill these pests that come out. Make sure you do not shoot at them at all because one bullet and they will die and that's just a complete waste of points. Also take note, do not take any insta kills or nukes, only max ammos and double points because they increase your points while the other two, they just decrease your points obviously. So once you have all that done, jump down into the sewers. Uh, to make your way to the power turn that on and then also buy the door to the bunker which costs 1250 and that's going to be it for round two round three is a lot more simple all you're going to be doing is six shots to the leg and then knifing the zombie till you have 2000 points then you're going to buy Foss blitz ak slappy taffy and after that just go ahead and end the round and we're going to move on to round four on round four, the maximum amount of shots that you can put into a zombie is a total of 10 with extended max. If you don't have extended max, it's a total of seven and then three on the side. Then you can go ahead and melee, but leave two zombies at the end of the round and then open the door to the labs, then turn on the crank so you can release the guy's craft machine. Also open the door to the morgue, then turn on the power in the labs, turn on the power in the morgue and also buy armor if you have enough points. Make sure you do that math so you know if you do have enough for the next round to buy the salt mines. Uh, once all of that is done, we can move on to the next round on round five we're gonna kill all the pest zombies and move on to round six but on round six do not kill any zombies until I tell you to do so so once we kill the zombie and move on to round six we're gonna open the salt mine doors for 1500 points and it's gonna release the bombers now there's four bombers total and we're gonna shoot the second head on their back to release the bomb be very patient with this step make sure you do not kill any of the bombers or else you're gonna have to restart because we're gonna be using these guys to get the Reaper battery so once you have shot the head and you remove the bomb go down 
and activate the hilt and get a total of 10 kills inside the ring zombies only do not kill the bombers once again uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the second step which is the rings so once the lights turn off, you can activate the Geistcraft transfer device by hitting the button in the command center, and then we can get started on the first red ring. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is kind of hard, but with the strategy that I came up with, it makes it a lot easier. So pretty much start off at the first red ring and then make your way down into the salt mine tunnels, and we're going to do a full circle all the way through the command center and back at the first red ring. Now, the reason I do this is because the bomber zombies are a lot quicker than the normal zombies, so by the time that you reach the red ring, they'll be stuck in the salt mine and you'll be able to kill any zombies that are in the first red ring and uh, just take note it takes a total of five zombies per ring and there's three rings in each area and there's two areas which is the laboratory and the morgue so once that first red ring is filled go ahead and train in the command center for about 10 to 20 seconds while the second ring settles in its location in the laboratory once the 20 seconds are up you can finally make your way into the laboratory and go up to the first three containers that have the whistlings and out of those three containers a whistling should pop out now this whistling you have to protect with your life you cannot kill them and if you do shoot them make sure it's with a pistol and it's absolutely necessary when you do shoot them so now we're going to move on with the strategy to the second ring train up in the village square until the whistling is there and then make your way back down into the laboratory now i sped this part up because it was way too slow at normal speed but pretty much make sure the bombers are right behind you head upstairs by the switch and then jump off the ledge there should be plenty of zombies downstairs that you can kill for the second ring now take note you will be using this strategy for the third ring so just retake the whistling back up into the village square then make your way back down into the laboratory and kill the zombies that you need for the third ring and now finally it's time to kill the bomber zombies so go down into the sewer area and purchase the door for 1250 and then head into the pack a punch and then just chill out there until the whistling shows up once the whistling shows up this is going to be the strategy to have him hit the panel and get the battery out of the wall so just train around this first pillar and then once he's right in front of it shoot the whistling run over to the panel and on his way to hit you he should stun the bomber zombies so they don't hit you at all and get you down and then pick up the battery and place it in the charging station then make your way back into the laboratory and pick up the first Tesla piece. This will allow the machine to reach the morgue area so it can be ready for round seven when we're filling up the souls there. Then wait for the bombers to come down into the laboratory and then also wait for the whistling. Once the whistling's there, make your way back down to the sewers with the bombers, train them up in a nice bundle, and then hit the trap. Make sure you have a thousand. They should all die by the saws at the door and that'll fill up the whole battery completely and that'll be it for round six. Round seven will be one of the longest rounds. So we're gonna start off by filling up the souls in the morgue area. Uh, you guys can go ahead and shoot the zombies if you have enough ammo and then knife them. But if you don't, just go ahead and melee. But also make sure you have at least 30 bullets in your M1911 for one of the future steps. Uh, so on screen, I'm gonna display some things. This is everything that we're gonna be doing on round seven. So that's why this round is gonna be one of the longest in the entire game. But as you can see, there's two colors. There's red and white. And red is what I'm gonna be showing you how to do in the video. And white is what I'm not gonna be showing you because then if I do show you everything that's on this list, the video is gonna be like 15 minutes and we're not even halfway there yet. So I'm just gonna show you the red parts and then the white you can do yourself. None of those require anything for me to show you like points or any strategies, but the red ones do. So, so now that all the souls have been filled inside the morgue area you can kill all of the zombies except four uh, feel free to shoot them and melee but if you don't have enough ammo make sure you have at least 30 in the clip to be able to shoot the lamps for the bloodthirst battery next we're gonna head back into the morgue and pick up the last and final part for the tesla gun and once we step foot inside of the command center a brenner's gonna spawn we're gonna head outside and wait for him once we see him we're gonna start opening the doors the first one being the pub the second one is going to be the one leading to the tower where we do the lightning rod step. And then the last and final one is going to be the back door of the sewers. And by the time we're done with all this, we'll be able to build a Tesla gun and then move on to the next step. So I'm skipping straight to step eight, which is taking the Reaper battery to the charging station. So you guys are going to have to do step three, four, five, six, and seven on your own before you do this step. Uh, so pretty much all you're going to do for this one is wait for the whistling and the zombie to get on this dock area and then you're gonna sprint into the pack-a-punch room where the reaper battery is uh, if at any time you get hit by a zombie during this step you can just go ahead and place the battery back down and then run away and then come back to the battery and then take it all the way to the morgue once again it's a very very easy step but I thought I would show it just in case you guys were wondering how you would get this battery all the way into the morgue so uh, moving on to the next one 
This is step 10 and 11 where we get the pest out of the red light. Go down and pack a punch and activate the disposal tube. And I start with the one in the lab area. Now I hit square and I did not get it on this try, which kind of got me worried because I have to let you know right now, if you do not get the red lights, you have to restart. There is no other choice. So then I go down to the second disposal tube in the command center. I hit square and luckily I do get the pest out of the pack a punch. If you got them too, well congrats because you just got through the RNG part of this easter egg, but once you have all those pests, round them up here at the spike trap and then activate the trap, make sure they're all bundled up together and they pretty much all die at the same time because I've had a game where they didn't all die at the same time and it ended up not charging the battery, so be careful with that, but that's going to be it for round 7, let's go ahead and move on with round 8. So just like the round 12 guide, we're going to activate the lightning rod defense step at the beginning of round 8 and then head back to the village square and activate frontline as soon as that green bar turns red. And if you did it correctly, at the top left hand corner, you will see the words activate and defend both secondary lightning rods at the same time. And that just confirms that you did the first one correctly. Now, since you use up your front line to defend the first lightning rod step, you're going to have to refill it, and all you need to do for that is train up all the zombies, shoot them with your 1911, and you're also going to aim for a goal of 4,500 points. Now, if you don't have that amount of points, go ahead and buy the machine pistol and then keep shooting the zombies. Once that is done, activate both of the lightning rods, and as soon as that green bar turns red, activate front line once again, and if all goes well, you should see in the upper left hand corner that it says activate the right hand of God, and that just shows once again that you were able to complete it correctly. After the nuke goes off and the zombies spawn in, go ahead and kill every single one except for two, and make sure you shoot them in the legs with your machine pistol to max out those points and be able to get 5,000 points. Now once I kill all the zombies except for two, I go ahead and buy quick revive because I know I have enough and then I can go ahead and move on to everything else. So last and finally, you can open up Pack-A-Punch. Now I only did two out of three disposal tubes on round seven, so I'm finishing up my last one. Once you open up Pack-A-Punch, you can Pack-A-Punch your M1911, then make your way down into the chamber and wait for the Wellsling to get down there as well. As soon as you see him activate the right hand of God, that will spawn the Zeppelin in the middle of the map where you can then shoot down the battery and then it will land in the courtyard area. Once you get over there, wait for the zombies, then kill them off, and then we can move on to round 9. At the beginning of round 9, you're going to be charging your Reaper battery and defending it. So just like with the lightning rod step, wait for the green bar to turn red and then use your front line. But right now, once again, I'm going to put on the screen everything we're going to do on round 9 and go over it. So just like last time, I have white and red, red being the things I'm going to show you and white being the things you're going to do on your own because they don't have any strategies and are fairly easy. So one thing I do want to talk about is number one, fill up the first battery and then take it down to the chamber. Uh, it says use the strat for the Reaper battery, the one that I use for the Reaper battery. Uh, so pretty much just hold the bomb, run. As soon as you get hit, drop the bomb, then do a circle around the map then once again pick up the bomb and then run and as soon as you get hit and so on and so forth all the way until you get down into the chamber then wait for the whistling to get down there as well then finally place the battery and then shoot down the second battery so that's all i wanted to address on this list uh after that everything else is pretty easy so let's just go ahead and move on Okay, so this is number three on the list where we go ahead and fill up the second battery with zombie souls. And the reason I have a strategy for this is because it's in a cornered spot and it's kind of hard to melee a ton of zombies mid round, especially with a shovel. So this is the strategy just go from the village square side of the map, do a circle all the way into the river side of the map, and then eventually you'll get back to the battery where there's no whistling and the bomber zombie isn't bothering you. And then you can just go ahead and melee without any troubles. So that's going to be it for the strategy and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next up. All right, so next up, we're gonna be getting the hurricane battery out of the panel from the wall, and uh, we're gonna be using the bomber, obviously, for this. Now, if you did kill the bomber, you do have one more chance on 11, but you can also do this on round eight. So have the bomber come from upstairs, downstairs, shoot the second head on his back to release the bomb, and then you can just blow up the bomb later on when there's no zombies there. And if you want a more in-depth guide, I'll leave a link in the description to one of the guides I had for it because they kind of changed the way the bomb works in, uh, in one of the recent updates. So just be patient with this step. Don't have the whistling in here like I do, and this should be pretty easy. But now let's go ahead and get the sword. 
I'm only going to show you guys how to turn the dials without being hit too often considering I'm pretty sure you all know how to flip the switches back on, shoot the Tesla gun at the coil, and then shine the Brenner head on the boxes to reveal the numbers. Uh, also before you do this strategy, take the whistling down to the village square, that way he doesn't bother you while doing this, but this is probably the best strategy because you can do two numbers on the dials uh, every time you go under the salt mines and then to one of the boxes. Uh, so after you do all that, get your coins, go down into the chamber, get the sword, and then we can go ahead and move on to round 10. On round 10, there's only one thing to do, and that is to train up all of the pet zombies that spawn, and then take them down to the spike trap once they're all bundled up together. Turn on the trap for 1,000, and get that last charge for the Bloodthirst battery. After that, pick up the battery, take it to its charging location, and that's going to be it for round 10. At the beginning of round 11, we're going to start charging and defending our Bloodthirst battery. As soon as that green bar turns red, you can then activate Frontline and just wait it out. I'm going to leave this in the background and put some things on the screen. And this is everything we're going to be doing for round 11. It's just a total of four things, so not too much. I'm showing you step one right now, and then I'm going to show you step three. So let's get into that, and then we can move on to round 12, which is the last and final tedious round before we get into the boss fight. So to charge the midnight battery, I like to use a strategy where I take the Westlings and I bring them over to the quick ride machine, that way they don't die by the trap itself, then I sprint over to the S mine trap, now be very careful with this, you want to bundle up the zombies as close as possible, and then kind of bring them down the stairs of the laboratory so by the time that you exit the trap, they'll die by the trap. Now the reason I'm saying this is because I did screw up once, when I activated the trap, the zombies followed behind me and it only charged the battery once, so just know if you do screw up, just like I did, you can still use the trap twice and fill up the whole battery and the round will still remain on round 11 after that just take the battery down to the labs and you'll be done with that stuff as soon as round 12 starts, pick up your midnight battery and then place it in the power transfer machine. Wait for that green bar to go to red and then you can activate frontline. And for the last and final time, I'm going to put on the screen the amount of things that we're going to do for round 12, go over them, and then continue with the guide. So as you can see, there's two different sections on this one. There's the top one with four steps and then the bottom one with five steps. And the reason it's this way is because for step four on the top section, we're going to be killing zombies in the pub with the sword and you might end the round. So if that happens, you're going to have to do the bottom section on round 13. But if you manage to save a zombie, you can do the bottom section on round 12 and have the rest of round 13 completely free where you just kill zombies and do one step. Also, what I want to talk about is the top section, step three, finish filling up your third battery. You can choose to do that on round 12 or round 13. You have those two options, but that's going to be it for this. I already showed you step one of the top section and uh, we're going to move on to step four which is getting kills in the pub area with the sword to feed the record souls and be able to get the code. To start off the strategy, make sure you have all three Westlings down in the chamber, then go ahead and sprint all the way to the pub area, place the record, and start mailing the zombies. Now I recommend to press R3 to kill the single zombies, and then once there's a horde of zombies, you can start using your special ability, which is the red burst that comes out of your sword. Now I told you to get this special ability by heavy mailing two zombies, I believe back in round nine. Now I do go down right here if that happens to you as well. Try and use a self revive to instantly get back up and start killing zombies again because you don't want to waste any time. The more time you waste, the more likely that you won't pass this part. Uh, so the way you know that you are done with this part of the step is once you melee a zombie, you'll notice that he doesn't fly up into the sky with electricity like you can see right here. And the other way to find out is just to turn around and look at the record player. There's going to be a bulb on the side of it that's flashing lights. As far as getting the code, you can just run away from the record and then come back and you'll be able to see the flashing green lights, which are the code, and you can just write down. Now, if you want to know which way the code goes in the combination, you got to come back at the record when there's no zombies around. And as soon as you see that red light, that's just going to show you that the record is restarting and that this is the beginning of the code. After you've done step one, two, three, and four of the bottom portion, you can move on to step five, which is shooting the chandelier. We're going to be shooting it with all three variants, and we're not going to shoot it with the fourth variant because we can't get it until round 14. So until then, we'll finish up on round 13. And all we're going to do this round is just kill every zombie except two. And then with the points that you have, get set up by your perks, by your armor. And once you're done, bring the Westlings down here. There should be a total of four. Turn on the trap, and that's going to charge your final battery. As soon as all four Westlings die out, you can then go in, pick up the battery, take it to the power transfer device. And as soon as the next round starts, which is round 14, you're going to put the battery into the power transfer device. Once again, just wait out until that green bar turns red. And then you can activate frontline. And as soon as the defense is over, run over to the power transfer device 
nice pick up the part build the final tesla gun and then take it down to the chamber and we're going to be shooting that last shot into the chandelier to finally be able to head into the boss fight but before you go into the boss fight don't forget to shoot your tesla gun at the hilt and then go ahead and activate it so then the boss fight can start because if you don't then something like this is going to happen to you yes now i did die and it was painful to watch so now that we're in the boss fight let's go ahead and go over the strategies that way you guys don't die at the final part of this easter egg and then we can all go on our ways sad because we had no one to play with and had to do this alone okay so first things first we're going to start off with number one shoot down the zeppelin as quick as possible you definitely have to do this because the zeppelin can kill your zombies and the zombies are going by rounds there's only two rounds to do this if you go over two rounds obviously you failed number two only kill zombies for the batteries unless it's a bomber you can just go ahead and blow his head off and then three on your second time putting a battery on the panzer mortar activate frontline apparently that brings in more zombies to actually complete this and four well you can read that yourself all right well let's get to it so as soon as you spawn in just do a circle around the area or a train until you see the zeppelin then you can go ahead and shoot that down fill up the battery once the battery is filled shoot the panzer mortar that's going to stun them you can then place the battery on them and that's going to be the first part now i'm not going to play too much of the entire easter egg because it's basically just me running around in circles waiting for the zeppelin to come back shoot it down fill the battery so on and so forth now the only thing that's different about stunning the panzer mortar the second time around is that this time once you place the battery on him you're going to activate frontline and apparently that spawns in zombies that are actually going to and allow you to do this by round 16. Now I will give you tips when you're filling up the batteries only use your swords. Now at the beginning of charging the batteries you can use your pistols but I usually recommend using your sword that way you don't overkill. Now that's pretty much the main cause for your game skipping to round 17. It's either you're not shooting the zeppelin down fast enough and that's killing zombies or you're just over killing zombies yourself. Now the last and final tip I'll give for you is just to keep running in circles around the area because by the time you end up at the battery you'll be able to kill zombies by the themselves like I'm doing right now and it's better than knifing into a full horde of zombies and now finally if you have your third battery completely filled you can stun the panzer mortar pick up that battery place it on them and congratulations you are officially a badass because you just beat the hardcore easter egg solo by round 16 can we get a round of applause no okay but on a more serious note i want to thank ac omega he helped me with the last couple of rounds with his guide i'm going to leave his link in the description below if you want to check him out uh this took a lot of effort on my end it took about one to two weeks to actually record this uh and get it while i was recording so it was a very very tough challenge i do recommend it i'm not gonna lie uh you feel really really good once you do beat it and it's a great challenge it improves your zombie skills you're more aware your reactions are faster you know how to kind of far more points but if you do decide to uh, give it a try let me know if you do complete it in the comment section below i would love to know that my guide helped you out if you have any questions let me know as well i would try to respond as soon as possible uh, if you enjoyed make sure you hit that subscribe button i'm going to be going all out for dlc one uh, but thank you guys for watching and I